millions of people around the world. You understand? And everybody by extension, because it's like leaven in the dough, what you preach and teach and the way you speak, how you think, all that stuff, man. You're very influential. So I am your best friend. I, oh, I'm the best friend of my enemies. I'm everybody's best friend. Everybody has that prerogative, okay? It's your choice. If you want to be every man's best friend, you can decide, well, this guy's going to, oh, no, I'm that guy's best friend. Well, let him dispute it. Then we'll be have a little friendly competition. Let's see who can be the best friend of this guy that we both claim to be the best friend of, okay? But it's not by being a yes man and, and being afraid to rub someone in the wrong way and walking on eggshells. You're not doing anyone a, a service. You're doing them a disservice. You're not doing anyone a favor. You're doing them an anti-favor, whatever the opposite of favor is. Doing a misdeed. An anti-favor is sufficient. But Jones transmits a lot of anger. And I understand that. It's attributable to fear. And that's what it is. It's fear. And the way he deals with it, he just attacks. He gets crazy because he's like a cornered animal. And he's got to just give his life more to God. He's got to become less, except that he's got to become less and God has to become more in his life. That's what every believer has to do. And promote more encouragement through Christ. That he's, Christ is victorious. The victory on the cross, how he won this battle with Satan, and how good is coming. Have no doubt. Have no, no, no misapprehensions about this. God's will is going to be established. Alex Jones, tell people that. Encourage them. Comfort them. Stop getting muddied down. You know, muddy down in these little matters of minutia and just it just it. You know, come on, man. The political stuff, you've got to let God just run your life, not the political goings-on. Yeah, point them out. People are going to hate you, man, for exposing them. You don't have to try to make them detest you and make them really determined to, you know, just just revel in your downfall. And, and, you know, anytime things go bad for you, that they're just licking their lips and chomping at the bit for more and just, you know, Satan's getting a big belly laugh and all those that, that, all those that hate you, man, that hate Trump. You know, don't give them what they want, but that's what you're doing by beating yourself up, by using words and terms that God doesn't approve of, man. And as simple as just delete, omit them from your vocabulary. If you're going to bring God in your conversation, bring it in a way that, hey, is uplifting and exalting. And he's there for your enemies. He's there for the most vile of men. He's not going to damn anybody. You don't know that somebody's damned to hell. It's not your job. It's not your place. You don't have that wherewithal, that authority to make that, to make that uh, distinction, that judgment call. You don't have it. None of us do. Thank God. If, in your right mind, you'll realize you're lucky to not want to judge people. Last year, they said they had 230 jumpers across America. That means people on freeway overpasses threatening to jump. They had to shut down the freeways because of these people. I wonder how much of that had to do with um, money. All of it, probably. The vast majority. They cite extreme mental health issues. So now, if you're mentally ill, okay, and you don't want to be homeless, and you're not a criminal, then you got to threaten suicide. you got to really shut down the freeway for a while. Then you earn your three hots and a cot. Or maybe a basic income. Nutty money. You know, last week I said that I left, uh, I was living on Malta when I was um, 9, 10 years old. Well, actually, yeah, I was about that age. But I didn't go straight from there back to the United States. We, My family lived in Ireland after Malta. First we lived in England, then we lived in Malta, and then the last place we lived before coming back to the States was Ireland. It was in 1968 when we came back to the United States. I was 10 and a half probably. I just wanted to correct it because sometimes, uh, you know, when you think back to in events in your life, it gets a little fuzzy. You know, the older you get and the farther back these events are. But um, I just wanted to put that out there. Well, apparently I'm about done with my talking points. 
and recent current events, so I'm going to get on to some thoughts from the previous week or two. Making, making lots of money is the secular, worldly definition of success. Loving your fellow man and keeping your soul is the spiritual, godly definition of success. Much higher definition. God is childlike, pure, innocent, logical, and free. And that thought came from God. God is our divine parents whom we will one day give an account for our credos, our lack or lack thereof. And we will call on to logically explain our belief systems. And we need to wonder, will our souls hold water? Or are there holes in our beliefs that cannot be and cannot be found worthy of deserving to go to a better place? because of those faulty beliefs. It's like missing the mark. It's easy to do. You see, that's a big problem for people. Our values have to be 100% in sync with his. we got to be on the same page with our values. And we are God's most valuable commodity, the souls of men on this planet. It's us. And so do you see it that way? To state having a sense of shame is a good thing, one may wonder why. Well, because compunction is a function of conscience, and like they say, use it or lose it. Hence, it is not only normal to feel shame, it is beneficial, and leads us to the amazing grace of God to keep coping, continue contending, and being grateful for God's grace to forgive. Which includes forgiving ourselves. A lot of times, we're hardest on ourselves because it's more comfortable. We can keep things contained if we just get really mad at ourselves. That's why I say the ball is always in our court to be a better human being, to be a nicer, more loving, kind human being. It's always our prerogative today to choose that. When anyone is a righteous human being, they see the unrighteous that ruled over men, the unrighteousness that rules over men. Mankind and womankind. They cannot resist fighting the good fight for justice and complete fairness to be the rule of the day upon the earth. One may be 99% egalitarian in their belief systems, but retain 1% elitist. Then they have missed the mark for salvation. They will wind up in the same camp as those whom have given themselves up wholly to an elitist mentality belief system. Right. That's pe a lot of people enjoy thinking that they're privileged and advantaged, and that's evil. Though we, as children of God, are indeed, then, like little gods, but there is no logic. <coughs> it is to no avail to let that fact go to our heads. After all, we are mere death-bound mortals. Each one of us is a single link in a chain of humanity consisting of over 7.5 billion links. Right. Our chain of humanity is only strong as the weakest link, my friends. People who call themselves Christians, quote, are by default calling themselves spokespeople for God. Such a proclamation must be taken exceedingly seriously, as the implications of misrepresenting the living God are dire, even horrendous. That's right, man. you got to take that seriously. You say you represent God? Better be serious. And take that responsibility very seriously. When considering the few things a man won't do for money, that is to say to survive, to live, to continue to exist, I came up with only one though certainly there are a few others I cannot imagine. And that is devouring a steaming pile of dog crap while having to slowly savor the flavor. Yeah, and you could use that as a metaphor for complying to the ways of this world, conforming to the satanic establishment. That's what it would be like for me. But for a lot of people, they've gotten used to it. Yeah, it's not so bad. Once you get through the first bite of savoring that hot steaming pile of dog crap, 
you know, you can move on to something else. But I wouldn't do it figuratively or literally speaking. There's no way for any amount of money I'm eating a pile of dog crap. See, for normal people, that's a long list of things they won't do for money. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful aspect of our characters as human beings. From de several decades of searching scriptures, I have come to understand that God, quote, to be very much like an innocent, young, hapless child, and our owner, our father, the sovereign ruler of the universe, rightfully beholding and possessing the commensurate power thereof. Yeah, you know, just because I say the character of God is like a little child, little children, male and female, uh, he's not without power. This is no paper tiger, but he is just more restrained than us, and he puts his foot down in a way that can't be resisted. And that's what's going on at this point in history. I firmly believe that's what's going on. I really do. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But it's getting close, man. We're down to the wire, the end of this age and the beginning of a new age, man. And all this nonsense about accepting deliberate impoverishment and this normalization of genocide on earth, man, it's going out the window. Thank God. With this small, tenuous window of opportunity, for the relatively few hours we spend alive walking this God's green earth, which is 876,000 hours if we live to be 100, and much of that time is spent sleeping, we should seek to get as smart as we can as fast as we can. Knowledge of pure truth is to be valued above all else. That's right, folks. Think about that. You know, I was curious once. I thought, well, how many hours you lived if you lived to be 100? And it's the simplest math question in the world, give or take a couple hours, literally because of leap years. It's 365 times 100 <coughs> times 24. So you take 24 hours in a day, multiply that by 365 days a year, and then multiply that by 100, and what you'll get is 876,000. So you don't even live 1 million hours, and a third of that approximately spent sleeping. Think about that. So we're here for, you know, half a million hours at the most. If you live to be 100, it's a trip, man, and a third of that sleeping. Using the ilk of George Soros as an archetype, villain, mastermind, I wonder if they succeed to induce Americans whom purportedly to be on, who purport to be on the, quote, right and then on the, quote, left, politically speaking. I've got to start this again. Using the ilk of George Soros as an archetype, villain mastermind, I wonder if they will succeed to induce Americans who purport to be on the side of the right and on the left, politically speaking, to fisticuffs, to induce them to fisticuffs, to a civil war. Well, you can count me out. If a lot of people think that's where we're headed, you know, like uh, Matt Bracken, the author of several books, I disagree. I don't think that they're going to be able to induce us into a civil war. Thank God for that, man. Clearly, both sides are delusional to think they have an authority, and a le any legitimacy, any authority, any clout, any validity to claim to be the good guy's status. They are sorely mistaken and have both been acting traitorously toward American values and the people thereof for a long, long time. That's right, man. They're all over. Right, left, they call themselves communists. They call themselves socialists and capitalists. They call themselves conservatives and liberals. They're liars, man. They're all, what they have in common is they're establishmentary. They want to support this trajectory toward death and destruction. And as Americans, we've got the biggest responsibility. I'm sorry. 
It might be a tough pill to swallow, but we have to set an example for the rest of the world. They're following in our footsteps, our example. They're looking to us. Like it or not, that's the way it is. We've got to put these monsters in their place, man. Authoritarian, uh, establishmentarian, fascist monsters, man, that don't give a crap about your political leanings, Democrat, Republican, uh, conservative, liberal. They don't give a crap, socialist, capitalist. They're pigs, man. They're swine. They're freaks. They're bratty little murderous children is who they are. And we've got to tell them, remind them, who's boss? Let God work through each one of us. And he will. He does work through us. He does.